back to their origin. I need to tell everyone what happened to Drake's spine. And I'm going to need Otto's help. Okay. Ah, again, so much to do. Before we talk to Otto and talk to the rest, I know that there is still no way. Oh, we can move on. Okay. So we can take on some quests and stuff. Let's go to Blackthorn. Let's see what he has. We're going to take a look at the missives then. And the Oritstone, of course. Before we go to Hippocrates, as always, and then Vivian. Right. Defender plus one. This is already better. So we're going to buy that weapon. Behemoth Shackle. Okay. Circle of Haven. That is worse. But we can still take a look at Reinforce. Uh, still worse. Also worse. Defender is a little bit better. We still can't craft the Götterdämmerung. We still need two Urichalcum and one Dark Steel. Okay. So. And. Let's take a look if she has the weapon for sale. Ah, it's a dangerous world out there. Yep, yeah, Defender. There it is. Let's get this one. It'd better all be here. Yeah. So now let's upgrade it right away. Uh, reinforce. There it is. You can thank me later. And plus two as well. Yeah, we have everything we need. Beautiful. Not my best work, but it'll do. All right, let's take a look at this weapon. That's the one. Defender. Throughout history, many prominent battle strategists have declared that the best offense is a good defense. So with a name like Defender, one might assume this blade the best of both worlds. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's that pretty in my eyes. So I'm not gonna take it. We're gonna stick with... Everdark? Or should I go back to the Mazamune? Nah, we had our time with the Mazamune already. We're gonna stay with Everdark until we get the Götterdämmerung. Alright then, Missives will be next. He's still standing here! Are you kidding? He's supposed to be in, uh, what's the word? Uh, Eastpool. A new life by Gaff. While the going was slow and not without the occasional run-in with some straggling orc, I saw Edda back safe to the Shadow Coast where Mid was waiting kindly with the Enterprise. On the voyage home, I like to think the poor lass opened up a little, telling us about her life and the life she wants for her baby. But I suppose it's up to us now to make certain the little one gets it. True. I still haven't seen her, but then again I haven't really looked for her. Uh, we might find her on the way somewhere. Okay then, let's go to Hippocrates. There's... I'm gonna I guess a lot to read up on. Do we have a new song? Enthroned in sable sky. In From Quite slow, and yeah, I didn't like it whatsoever. <laughs> All right, we do have a little bit. Whoa, that's a lot. If Nearly half a level. Question for me, I should be happy to answer it. Okay, okay. As always, we're gonna start with persons of interest. Clive Rossfield. As Mythos, dominant of the second icon of fire, Ifrit. Unlike the other dominants, Clive has the curious power to absorb icons from their hosts and wield their strength as his own. The being known as Ultima appears to crave this same power, identifying Clive as Mythos, a vassal for power unlimited. However, Clive refuses to surrender himself to Ultima's will, making of this godlike being another enemy in his fight to build a world where people can live on their own terms. Dion Lesage, meeting with Clive, dominant of Bahamut, Warden of Light. Knowing all too keenly how Ultima's machinations are ushering the world to its doom after the events in Twinside, Dion pledges his allegiance to Clive and Joshua Rossfield, arriving on the Enterprise just in time to ride to the brothers' rescue in Stonehear. Edda at the hideaway. 
a young woman with child who had made her home in the Veluda village of Eisler. After the Arke sky spread across the land, her fellow villagers turned Akashic and departed for a reverie, leaving her alone, afraid and in hiding. By fortune, she was found by Clive and Gaff, who took her back to the safety of the hideaway. It is speculated that the reason she survived is because the child growing inside her is a bearer and thus more able to resist the effects of ether. And Ultima within the interdimensional rift. One of a race of ancient godlike beings. It was their creation of magic that led to the rise and spread of the blight. The few survivors of their race fleeing to the unspoiled land of Valestia to attempt to remake the world. For this, they created the mother crystals to harvest huge amounts of ether and sowed the seeds of humanity that it might one day produce a vessel strong enough to channel it. That the humans would one day develop wills of their own they did not foresee. Lay of the land. Valestia hidden truth. A realm comprising the twin continents of Storm and Ash, over which the Mother Crystals once stood vigil. Countless eons ago, Ultima arrived here, fleeing the blight that devoured his own homeland and resolved to rebuild the world and usher in a new and final age of pure reason. It was he who placed the Mother Crystals in each corner of the land that they might harvest the ether he needed to achieve this end. The Kingdom of Belud after the capital's fall. The sole surviving nation in Ash. Shortly after the death of Barnabas Tharm, scion of Zemeckis and Catspaw of Ultima, Drake's head was shattered, leaving the capital of Stonehear without Mother Crystal and King. Stonehear after the nation's fall. Capital of the Kingdom of Belud, located on the coast of Freak's Calm, Ash's northernmost bay. Its mother crystal Drake's spine was eventually destroyed by Sid and his allies, but by this time the city had already been lost, its leader perished atop a distant spire, its citizens reduced to mindless sprawls, and its streets claimed by orcs and masterless beasts. And Drake's spine after the mother's fall. A mother crystal that towered over Stonehear, capital of the kingdom of the Lude. The fall of Drake's tail meant that for a brief moment it was the last remaining mother crystal in Valestia. That moment however ended abruptly when the spine fell following Clive's otherworldly struggle with Ultima. The fall of Drake's spine. In the year 878, the Valuda capital of Stonehear, already besieged by Akashic and Beastmen, was rocked yet further by the destruction of its mother crystal, Drake's spine, at the hands of Sid the Outlaw and his companions. The Crystalline Dominion, following the emergence of Origin. A once independent state straddling the continents of Storm and Ash. Sunbreak Qua dominance here and with it any semblance of order was brought crashing down in the bloody coup led by Prince Dior Lesage. Not long afterward, twin sides luckless inhabitants were subjected to further misfortune when the fall of the realm's final mother crystal at Drake's spine caused an ancient construct to rise from beneath their city, sowing death and devastation in its wake and effectively decimating the already reduced populace. The Interdimensional Rift Let's start with basic information and then move over to Hidden Truth. A place beyond space and time, termed both a rift between worlds and our darkness by its creator, Ultima. Clive and Joshua were forcibly summoned here by the mad deity that they might reflect upon their transgressions. Clive and Joshua were forcibly summoned here by the mad deity when they ventured too close to the heart of Drake's spine. Upon fighting their way free, the pair emerged to find that their victory over Ultima had resulted in the shattering of the Mother Crystal. So I wanna say we were like inside of the Mother Crystal then? That's what it sounds like. And then Origin, a vast structure that lay dormant beneath the crystalline dominion for countless centuries. When Ultima's scheme reached its final stages, it was summoned from the depth, sowing untold destruction and leaving bleak black skies in its wake. It eerily resembles a mother crystal. Yep, that's true. Right, Mysteries of the Realm. The Mother Crystals, their true purpose. Enormous glassy mountains that once towered over the lands of Valestia, providing the crystal that the people of the Twins relied upon in their everyday lives, while at the same time leeching ether from the Earth. Clive and Joshua learned that they were planted here by Ultima for that very purpose, that the creature might accumulate enough ether to cast a supremely powerful spell, one that would remake the world. The Deadlands Hidden Truth Barren wastes where the ether has dried up entirely and no longer gives the land life. Not only does this render magic all but unusable, but the ground and water are also stained darkest black and not even the smallest seedling grows. Little to the knowledge of most Valestians, the spreading blight is in fact driven by the mother crystals that drain away the land's ether for Ultima's ends. Though the beings flew to Valestia to escape the blight, overuse of magic by the human civilizations that followed only succeeded in despoiling this last unblemished land. Magic Channeling 
the art of channeling ether to make one's imagination manifest. Bearers and dominants can cast magics without a crystal, but this comes at a cost relative to the amount of ether channeled, the crystal's curse that petrifies their flesh. For this reason, Ultima's incorporeal form prevents him from casting the supremely powerful spell with which he means to remake the world, and so he seeks a vessel strong enough to withstand the torrents of ether required. Okay, now we actually get what he's trying to do. Interesting. Great beasts. The behemoth and Fafnirs of the realm, large dangerous beasts to whom all others bow. These creatures ruled for generations as the kings of great forests or tall peaks, only to be driven from their homes by the blight and forced into unwelcome contact with humanity. They tend to have little tolerance for ethereal exposure, so it is common for them to turn Akashic on the merest contact with an ether flood. Ultima's Thralls Unmasked Soulless automata, largely composed of ether, whose only drive is to see that their creator's will is done. They appeared all over Velestia after Ultima brought about primogenesis and the skies of the realm fell dark. Logos, where Ultima uses mythos to describe... to describe? There's an S too many. Let's read it again. Where Ultima uses mythos to describe the vessel he has long awaited, one into which he can pour his soul and cast his supreme spell, Logos indicates its blasphemed form, a vessel over which the will of another has complete claim, making of itself a false god. Aha. Uh -huh. Sin. In Ultima's eyes, mankind's greatest sin is the awakening of free will. His servants straying from the path, their creator laid out for them and forging one of their own. However, Clive contends that this is a sin by which Ultima is equally bestained. And indeed, if humanity is indeed Ultima's creation, does not their every action, every emotion stem from him? Yeah, true. God created mankind in his image, right? Isn't, isn't it something like this in the Bible? So even God himself, itself, herself, whatever, is flawed? Like Just like humans are flawed? I don't want to be blasphemous here, but this is just what I get from that. New World. The paradise Ultima seeks to summon into creation. One free from the blight that almost ended his race. Though Barnabas believed that he and his fellow faithful would be allowed to join his deity there, he was mistaken. Only Ultima and his kin shall have a place in this new paradise. A paradise freed not only from blight, but from humanity. And lastly, the bestiary. Ifrit Risen, Hidden Truth. The two icons of fire united as one with a might that far exceeds either icon alone. With the body of Ifrit and the wings of the phoenix, its appearance closely resembles that of Ultima, as depicted in the ancient murals of the Circle of Malleus. Could this be the final true form of the vessel that Ultima requires to remake the world? That seems like it, yeah. Infernal Icon, a form long since discarded by Ultima that brings to mind Ifrit, the icon manifested by Clive. It is seemingly incomplete, lacking as it does the wings of the being created when Clive and Joshua combined the powers of Ifrit and the Phoenix. Interdimensional Ultima, in order to further test the strength of the vessel Mythos, Ultima lured both Clive and Joshua deep into the shadowy depths of his fractured mind, where he faced the brothers clad in the remnants of his erstwhile flesh, the Infernal Icon. And lastly, Behemoth, towering agents of destruction known for their distinctive dual horns and a roar that can topple the mighty heavens. Simply the mention of one has been known to instill fear in the hearts of even the most seasoned of warriors, and as such few ever ventured to hunt these beasts of legend, leaving them to roam the blackened hills of ash undisturbed. That is, save the scant few, the royal army has somehow remarkably managed to fetter and tame for deployment on the front lines of battle. Really, you can tame a behemoth? I would like to know how. <laughs> but that's it for now. The door to the shelves shall ever be open. So, let's go to Vivian and then talk to her. Actually, no, before we go to her, I want to take a look around and see if I can find Edda. I want to talk to her. Hey, Why hello! Is this the last of the Mother alone. Crystals, do you think? Oh, you or could there be others buried out there? It's supposed to be the last one. There's not like a fuck-off crystal hanging over the horizon to sour your eel. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look if we can find Edda. I wanna say she might be at the infirmary, right? She should say be because she has a baby. There she is. I Thank thought you, so. Thank you, my lord, for taking me in. Everyone here has been so kind. It reminds me of home. You're welcome. You're very much welcome. Okay, so let's go to Otto and talk to him unless... Oh no, Vivian. First Vivian and then we're gonna talk to Otto. The cracking of the spine. 
Drake's spine falls and at long last the history of the Mother Crystals come to a close. And yet the world is far from saved. Stonehill streets still crawl with maddened monsters while an even greater evil emerges from deep beneath the ruins of Twinside. The fall of Drake's spine. Clive and Joshua arrive at Stonehill only to find the city crawling with Akashic. They make for the Mother Crystal but are accosted by Ultima and transported away into his darkness. There the brothers' bonds succeed in repelling Ultima once more and together they shatter Drake's spine. Yes, thank you very much and now we need to talk to Otto. Still alive I see. Something tells me that I saw on the horizon is your doing. How'd you manage that? It's a long story. One that I'd rather only tell once. Right. All hands on deck then. Is this everyone? Well, it looks like those are the ones who count, because there's still I'm more. I'm sure you've all guessed. The crystal which now commands the eastern skies was summoned by Ultima. He called it Origin. Though the significance of that name is as yet unclear. What does it matter what it's called? Its emergence tore Twinside asunder and wiped my homeland from the map. Mention of the Dominion Spires can be found in the oldest of Valisthian records. But to the best of my knowledge, none provide any hint as to their true nature. That they would prove the horns of some slumbering demon. Well... The Dominion's demise was at least quick. Elsewhere, the Republican army cannot hope to contain the chaos engulfing Randalar. Canva is in flames, and the Empire... Our allies are crying out for answers. I've sent the curse breakers to give them what assurances we can, but right now that amounts to fuck all. They wouldn't be able to stop what the skies have started in any case. People here and across the realm grow sicker with every passing day. Could it be that this new mother crystal is like the others? That it draws upon the land's ether? certainly looked that way from stone here if that were true it would explain the hastening spread of the blight since the crystal's appearance would it not and as the land's ether slowly rises to the surface it pulls corrupting all who cannot channel its energies rk above Ether floods below, and in the middle, here we languish, hopelessly entrapped. <laughs> it's all right. When we faced him at Stone here, Ultima told us his true power quickens in the Halls of Origin. Needless to say, we cannot allow that to continue. If we are to stop him, we will have to find a way into the crystal. How are we going to manage that then? It's up in the sky. And fast as she is, the Enterprise can't fly. Not yet. Right? Come on. Let's build it's an airship. It's to take in. And I reckon we'd all benefit from some time to clear our heads. The answer will come to us. Don't you worry. Ain't that right, Clive? Right. Or the Phoenix That's has right. to fly us over there. Well, go on then. Bugger off. Or Bahamut, maybe. Same goes for you, Clive. You won't solve anything like this. Trust me. Go and get some fresh air, right? Eh? Thank you. Joshua. 
Joshua seemed upset. Yeah, so we should talk to him. Let's do this right away. Ultima may have created us, but he doesn't make us who we are. Only we can do that. And if he would have us fight for our survival, so be it. It's what we've been doing all along. Much like Ultima himself, it would seem. His new world being naught but a means to survive. And so, we must contend to decide which of us shall inherit the land. Should Ultima prevail, it will mean death for us all. Of that, we can be certain. Yeah. But even should he fail, what world awaits us? A withered, godless place where our newfound freedom will most like prove a chain in itself. Well, that may be, but a chain can always be broken. As long as one has the will to break it, it won't be easy. It may take generations, centuries of suffering. And that is if everyone plays their part. But it will happen. And when it does, it will be on our terms. That is the world that awaits us. <laughs> Indeed. And what better world could one wish for? But first, we have to reach that crystal. Then it's a good thing I have wings. You can barely stand, let alone fly. And only the Founder knows what horrors await in those skies. You certain about this? Am I certain? I am the Phoenix. I will do what I must. This is our fight. Remember? All right. I yield. But only what you must, yes? I'm still your sworn shield. That you are. And what of my wings? <laughs> it's just as I said, Phoenix or Bahamut. Lest you forget, you go to stand against a god. I would not have you succumb to fatigue before the fight begins. Ifrit. Your brother mentioned that some few of the Dominants who had lost their power to you were still able to prime. Is that true? It is. Mm-hmm. But they sh most mostly died afterwards. But their icons no longer submitted to their will. Ah. Then mine will have to be stronger. That you both might save your strength for the battle to come. You don't have to do this. If you do, there's a chance you might lose all you have left. And what have I but regret? My life ended in the Dominion. I fear death no more. Besides, I would have words with Ultima. He has much to answer for. We are in your debt, Dion. We can speak of debts when this is over. He speaks like a man who knows he's not coming back. has come to terms with that. That doesn't mean that we have to, does it, Clive? 
Time to talk to Jill. Okay. I really hope she understands. Yeah. Come to wish on a star. <laughs> that might not be such a bad idea. This is it, Jill. You know what I have to do. Why well, I have to do it. There's no turning back now. This is where our journey was leading us. Where it will end, for better or worse. I could pray to Metia for you. But you'll be alright, won't you, Clive? I'm not so sure about that. You always are. I did promise we'd watch the moon together. I'll be waiting. <laughs> well, that was a short dialogue. It's almost time. Better make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Okay, so there's a bunch of new stuff. Let's get started. Oh yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six side quests at least. Then we have the missives too, plus the aligned reports. Okay, there's um, there's much to do. Um, let's go clockwise. Actually, we're gonna finish this one later. Uh, we don't have any hunts yet. That's too bad. I would have liked to do the hunts first. Okay, let's start with this one. Three's a company. Gav. Ugh, you all right? Let's talk about Origin. About that. If there's anything I can do to help you kill this Ultima bloke, you just say the word, eh? You could promise to take Sid's name off my hands. <laughs> the first time you don't hear him talk, but he has some text. Oi. Don't even joke about that. Anyway, I thought you said you hadn't finished with it yet. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Now... If you wanted to give me an even grander title, something to rival your Sid the Outlaw, that would be a different story. Let's see. Gaff the Magnificent, Gaff the Almighty, Gaff the Lionheart, something along those lines. I'll leave that to you to decide. But he's moving his lips. This is so weird. This is really weird. This looks wrong. Yeah, this is really... The hell? And he, he keep, he's just not stopping. Okay, I'm just gonna keep reading on. I'm sure you're more than capable of choosing the perfect moniker for Sid's right-hand man. <laughs> right-hand man, eh? I'll take it. <laughs> okay, that was weird. You off then? Oh, it's Byron! Uh, let's talk about Origin first. You are set on this plan of yours, then? I am. Huh. Hmm. You never were one to shy away from a fight. <laughs> Some uh, might say it runs uh, in the family. Ha! <laughs> Your father would be proud. Thank you, Uncle. I know he'll be with us up there. As for down here... You may take comfort in the knowledge that the realm will be in my capable hands until your return. <laughs> Indeed. All right, then let's start Three's a Company. Clive, my boy. Rutherford informs me that we owe you our thanks. Hadn't intended for you to get involved, but such are the times we live in, huh? I would have done the same for anyone else. You're far too modest, Clive. You'd make a terrible nobleman. But tell me, is the realm truly in as dire a state as Rutherford suggests? From what little I saw, you were right to be worried. Uh, I suppose I should have expected the worst. But I was rather hoping the great and good of the realm might have things a little more under control. Alas, it seems that firm leadership is in short supply these days, and without it, the people are bound to lose their way. We must move quickly. But where do we start? True, the challenges that face us are many. 
But in my estimation, there are two key areas to be addressed before any other. The realm's armies and her larders. As you've seen firsthand, it's every man and woman for themselves out there. Certain cities have banded together to try and maintain some semblance of order, yes? But such cases are few and far between. And yet, the only remedy for the chaos that faces us is unity. A unity that transcends even the borders laid down by our ancestors. In short, if Storm does not stand together, she will fall apart. But how would one even begin to unite the realm? The armies, my boy. As I told you already, we begin by restoring order among the ranks of those sworn to maintain it. Sadly, I doubt I could convince even the lowliest gaggle of privates to dig a latrine together. But I do know someone the High Commanders have been known to listen to on occasion. Field Marshal Eugen Havel. I thought he was retired. He was, until an Akashic army tore through Randalar and killed most of the rank and file. There is no man alive more capable. Literally. And as luck would have it, I've already spoken with him on the matter. Of course you have. <laughs> and he's agreed to help. On one condition. That he first speaks with you personally. Havel has always been a man of frustratingly rigid principle. And he has certain qualms about clasping arms with... Well, with an outlaw. I extolled your many virtues as best I could, of course. But the old goat was adamant that he be allowed to appraise you in person. He don't mind, do you, my boy? Of course not. That's fine. As long as chaos reigns, we will never build a better world. I'll do whatever it takes. And if the field marshal wishes to speak with me in person, then so be it. That's the spirit. I'll leave for Randalar at once. Yeah. Would you send a Stolas? Of course. Ah, no need. Is We're gonna go the there right away. Capital. That won't take I'll long. Have tell Havel to expect you forthwith. Excellent. Thank you, Uncle. No, thank you, Clive. All right then, let's get started. Ah, yeah. This is where we need to go. We know this. And now let's take a look where we need to go. Oh, it's over here. Oh, we're going to Boklat and then all the way south to Randilla. But there's a shop as well, so we're going to take a look at this first and foremost. Just to see which wares this one has. You won't find a finer array this side of the strait. All right, the Wrath of Darkness, Heaven's Cloud, reduces Heaven's Cloud cooldown time by 2.5 seconds. Okay. All right, then. Let's go you to Randilla and meet Havel. Can't be Rutherford, can it? Turncoats and cowards, the lot of you! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you shall have! What's going Allow on here? Me. I don't need your. Please, uh, Field Marshal, oblige him. This won't take long. Yeah, it shouldn't. You're right. It won't. Men, finish him. Still alive, really? Okay. A little longer than I'd have liked. Yeah, definitely. Field Marshal Havel, I presume. Are either of you injured? No, my lord. You arrived just as our escort turned on us. Fucking traitors! I'd heard reports of soldiers in the outlying regions abandoning the oaths they swore. But I hadn't thought the corruption had reached so close to the heart of the Republic. 
It's a fucking disgrace. Your interfering old bastard of an uncle tried to warn me, of course. My lord, Marquis. Or is Sid the outlaw more to your liking? Call me what you want. Yeah, whatever you like. It doesn't change who I am. All the urgency of the message I bring. My uncle has a plan to right the realm, and he needs your help to see it through. Before I agree to anything, I'd have you answer one question. Okay. What do you stand to gain from all this? Saving the world? I won't deny that I might benefit from further chaos. But I seek a new beginning for all of us. And while the choices I've made may not always have been the right ones, I know I made them for the right reasons. For so long, so many of us have been told how we could live, how we could die, when it should have been our decision all along. Now we have a chance to put things right. But in order to take it, we must stand together. Even if it be beside those with whom we don't see eye to eye. Certainly not the words I expected from an outlaw. But perhaps your uncle was right. You are no ordinary outlaw. I'll never hear the end of this. All right. I'll start by ordering my most trusted guard to bring the Dalmechian fringes under control. Next, I'll make contact with my counterparts in the Imperial Army and see if I can't convince them to try and restore order in their own territory. Thank you, Field Marshal. But they are not the only ones we will need to convince. What do you mean? I don't doubt that I can bully some sense into a few generals. But those they answer to require a different kind of persuasion. And when it comes to honeyed words, well, we will need an envoy. One who can court even the most stubborn of statesmen. You, perhaps. I'm flattered. But I'm no diplomat either. And I have other problems to attend to. What we need is a skilled arbitrator. And I may know just the person. Is that so? And would he happen to be an outlaw too? Of a different kind, perhaps. Uh, Who's talking about? Beggars can't be choosers. I suppose we'll all have to find a little of the outlaw in ourselves if we're to make it through this. Very well. Send your man to me right away. I shall. Uh, my lord Marquis. Your Lord Uncle bade me escort the Field Marshal to his manor in Port Isolde. And I will see that my associate joins you there. Very good, my Lord. Huh. An envoy. I'm not sure I'm the man to talk anyone round. I can barely convince my brother to take his medicine. No. This is a job for someone with experience. Someone like Quinton. Oh. I hope I can convince him at least. Well, he's not dead. So, I wanna say so. And then, let's just go to him right away. He is over there. Alright. Actually, let's go from here. That's quicker. Quinton. I have a proposal for you. Do you now? Something tells me you'll be asking more of me than a cask of goat and gold. Go on then. Propose. You'd have me convince the chiefs and chamberlains of the realm that they should simply swallow their pride and do the one thing that has proved impossible for thousands of years. Was there anything else? Perhaps I can fetch you a meat pie as well. <laughs> I know it's a lot to ask, but I can think of none better suited to the role. And you'd have me give up what little I have left to do it. I told you, Clive. 
The people of Lost Wing are my family, and I cannot abandon them. You'll have to find someone else. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so am I. And why might that be? What he's asking. How is it any different to what you've done so far? They want you to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. That's what you do best. <laughs> if it's the vineyard you're worried about, we'll see that the grapes are picked and the tons filled. You know we will. It's not that. Then what is it? Mm -hmm. You said yourself we're family. Don't you trust us? You know that's not what I'm... Then what are you saying? That only we are worth saving? Why turn your back on everyone else? You convinced us we could build new lives for ourselves, and if you can do that, who's to say you couldn't convince the entire realm? A stirring argument. I fear that any rejoinder I make might fall somewhat flat by comparison. So you'll join us? <sighs> Where do you need me? Field Marshal Havel will want to speak with you in person. He's currently in Port Isolde. I can arrange for a party of curse breakers to accompany you there. That would be very much appreciated. I hear the roads are far from safe these days. <laughs> Hopefully not for long. My uncle will want to know that his plan is taking shape. Yeah, I thought so. Let's go home and talk to Byron. Oh, he's already here. Nice. Uncle, I bring good news. The field marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has! I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Port Azolder as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution. And I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned Liberator. One of your co-conspirators? Master Quinton would probably call me one of his. But yes. Another outlaw, then. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Uncle. Assuming Havel and Quinton can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why, you, my boy. Rumour has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. <laughs> well, the old battleaxe was so pleased. She had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. That's good news. Now... I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. Okay. Rossfield Manor. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with Akashic? You'll find another bloody road. I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. Oh, says the man <laughs> with a belly bigger than a band of curls. <laughs> My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen. Perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. 
And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. <laughs> Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? <laughs> friends? <laughs> I can't stand the man! Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company are you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal. Criminal? How? <laughs> how? Nice dare camera you? work. <laughs> you are not fit to breathe the same air as this fine, upstanding young gentleman. Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw. Once more unto the breach. <sighs> Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation, nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, show them that we walk it ourselves, then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands. But the well-being of her people lies in ours. And we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, my quill. Okay. Well, my boy, the stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities, that you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall, and there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. Oh, thank I, you. Uh, I want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. Okay then, done with Three's Company. The Tri-Unity Accord, signed by representatives from Rosaria, Dalmechia and Sunbreak. This mutual accord sets the stage for a new age in storm, if not officially, then at least in spirit. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? Byron Rossfield. We will have this in our chambers. Okay, and then we have Heaven's Cloud. Uh, reduces Heaven's Cloud cooldown time by 2.5 seconds. Okay. Alrighty. So, I thought so. Yeah, I'm gonna take a look at our reward right away before we continue with the next side mission. Otto! If you've got something to ask... Ask. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the hideaway first and foremost. No one round here is bold enough to, or daft enough to say I am fit for the Necker's yard, but I sure as hell ain't getting any younger. Might be time to take a step back. Let the fledglings spread their wings. Young God's as bright as the inside of a barrel, but his heart's in the right place, and his constant failures never seem to dim his spirits either. Reckon the same might have been said of me when I was his age. But if it weren't for Sid giving me the room to fall and a hand to help me up again, I never would have changed. It would have been the gods leading the gods, Clive, assuming we'd made it this far. And now about the origin? Trust you to go and pick a fight with a bleeding god. I didn't sign up for all this excitement, you know. No. Sid did say the higher ups wouldn't be too happy about us trying to change the world. Bah, you've got me there. And it ain't as if I have anything better to do, so no more lip out of me. 
But it's that lip that keeps us on our toes, Otto. <laughs> Is that right? Well, I'd better start looking for something else to moan about then, hadn't I? Okay. I know you'll do right by us, Clive. How may I help you today, Clive? All right, next reward. The Roaring Hearth. Uh-huh. Or Hearth. Continental acclaim. If the drunken galley captain I shared a table with last night is to be believed, word of your exploits has made its way across the seas to the great continent. What is more, she claims there are those who would see you flourish, herself being one such woman, Gareth. And now we've got the Genji gloves. There you are. I'm gonna take a look at that in just a bit, and then we will need 455 still. So, increases damage dealt to enemies by 5%. This is for all damage, it's not just attack. I'm gonna keep it as it is, yeah. But 5% for everything would be quite nice. All right, then on we go. Uh, let's go to the nearest one. Let's go to him or her. Trial and error. 